few words today, and those are those of my constituent, Mr. Philip James of Talon Green, which is um, right near the English border. And Philip James is a 3D artist, and this is what he movingly wrote. I was diagnosed with brain cancer a few days after my 30th birthday, where I proposed to my fiance. Since then, I've set a wedding date of the 7th of April 2017. It is also my mission to help others dealing with this awful disease that has a preventable poor prognosis by doing a daily blog about how I'm fighting it. And I also want to talk about what research I've done myself. Mr. J Mr. James, as I said, is chronicling his condition in a daily blog. His story, of course, is a very heartfelt one. And I think it shows one of the many reasons why we need to listen to people who are to date fighting and battling against brain tumours and why it's so important that we as a country spend more on research. Uh, yesterday was the uh, parliamentary debate and the debate was interesting because we had a really good turnout from the MPs. I think there was just uh, over 30 MPs that actually attended the debate. Um, and it was very emotional hearing my name get read out and my story being explained to the debate. Um, so I really have to thank the um, Labour MP Susan Ellen Jones for that. Um, that was very special. Um, but the thing that struck me the most was um, it was very emotional listening to how many young people are affected by this disease and how many young people have lost their lives to this and some of the stories you know it's just too many where people were saying barely made it to two years old and passed away and it's just so unacceptable um, you know a huge part of my strategy in managing this terrible disease is coming at it from from the science of botany um, so kind of like you know herbs and so on and anything that's grown in nature um, and that was one of the things that wasn't really mentioned in the debate yesterday it was very heavily focused on um, existing protocols like key, um, radiation and chemo and um, I, that was the only thing I think was lacking um, there wasn't many people that were saying there needs to be access to off-patent um, treatments and so on um, and because there's been so much success with off-patent I'm not sure how aware all the people in the room were aware of that um, but I think that's a big part of my awareness fight is uh, obviously trying to fight for legalization of medical cannabis. I mean I myself have never been a recreational user. I've read so many reports like police that say yeah uh, we raided a guy and um, he said he but he said he was using it for medicinal purposes and then we saw him climbing up his uh, ladder into the lot into the loft um, as if it's like a bogus excuse because he's highly mobile. Well you know I'm highly mobile you know I'm very physically fit really um, I'm within my BMI um, but it doesn't change the fact that I have a very uh, dangerous uh, grade of brain tumor inside my brain and um, so I think the police should really take this into account because I I'm fully aware that most of the police in the country are um, they understand that, um, you know, these are not stupid people. They understand that um, chasing after um, people using a plant um, like this is a huge and expensive waste of valuable resources for the police in the, Uni in the United Kingdom. There's Derbyshire police, for example, that have said that um, they will only arrest people for uh, cannabis use if they're being blatant so obviously you know you've kind of got it coming to you if you're 
smoking a spliff out in the street. And, and, and that's, that's fair enough because, you know, what if kids see it, you know, it's, um, you know, you don't, and it's not a place you have to do it. Uh, there's nothing wrong with doing it in your home or, or away from the public eye. Advocates and uh, recreational users, we have to uh, respect that not everyone agrees with us and um, uh, we, you know, we have to work with them on that. I have uh, a lot of respect for um, politicians that are becoming uh, advocates of uh, legalisation. Um, I know it's a big part of uh, li liberal democrat policy now, and I do think that it's uh, a shame that they they have been so punished for um, the coalition government because uh, they were a minority party and they were punished severely for their pledges on tuition fees. But consider this, they were a minority party with the Conservatives, so do you really think there was any chance they were ever going to get that policy through? And, uh, and the same for uh, legalisation of cannabis. Imagine if they were still in a coalition government with the Conservatives now. Do you really think, as a minority party, they would be able to push that through? Because the Conservatives are showing just the same disregard for science as the previous Labour administration did when they disregarded the findings that Professor David Nutt found on um, cannabis use and how it should be classed as. Um, and then uh, I think it was Jackie Smith, a uh, well-known idiot, who was um, famous for spending taxpayers' money on porn for her husband. Um, she decided to disregard his scientific findings and to reclassify cannabis um, as a Class B dangerous substance, which it obviously isn't. Um, but recently I have heard that the Conservative stance on cannabis, um, even after huge successful petitions, they have said that uh, we will not debate this, uh, we will not take this forward, we will just ignore it because there is a wealth of evidence um, that cannabis is harmful. Um, which is a huge cop-out because, you know, how anecdotal is that? And where's your evidence? You know, you said there's a wealth of evidence out there. Um, doesn't seem to exist to me. Um, the only instance where I can see cannabis can be harmful is if you abuse it and anything can be abused. Um, but, for example, things that are legal can be abused, like alcohol, which is obviously far more detrimental. Um, for example, I have to be teetotal. Um, alcohol is extremely bad for the brain. Um, so if you have a brain cancer like me, um, you need to avoid it, um, always. Uh, there's no exception, there's no cheat days on this, um, there's no, uh, oh one won't harm, because I've seen people who have had uh, fairly little alcohol consumption, and as a result they've had something like five seizures as a result of that, um, after going through surgery and uh, radiotherapy and all the damage that chemo can do. So. That's legal, and it can be abused. Um, cannabis isn't legal, and it's far harder to abuse it, although it's not impossible to abuse it. But again, I think that comes back to how us advocates for medical use and recreational use need to um, set an example by not abusing it, which is really easy to do. It will never be legalised if there isn't unity between both sets of medical advocates and recreational advocates. So this is a really important issue and um, we, we just need to wake up and buck our ideas up on this because there's a long fight ahead in terms of legalising cannabis for medicinal use or recreational use. Um, 
it's a long fight ahead because we have um, a government at the moment which is obviously never going to uh, seriously consider it or even look at scientific data. They'll put policy ahead of scientific data just like the previous Labour government did with Jackie Smith. Uh, so this is what I call a bulletproof tea. Uh, so in this tea I'm going to use some ghee, butter, um, I'm going to have some ginger in there, some organic dandelion root tea, um, a little bit of black pepper, uh, turmeric, and some rosemary just floating on the top. Um, yeah, so that is basically my bulletproof tea. And obviously when I was going through radiotherapy, I was not having tea like this. Um, I was literally just having the dandelion root on its own. Um, and the reason I did that is because now there's a lot of antioxidants in there. Um, so I am, what I'm trying to do here is to slowly increase the amount of antioxidants the further away I get from when I finished radiotherapy. Because you don't want to have lots of antioxidants uh, while you're going through radiotherapy. So, um, they are delicious. Um, so if you are in a situation like mine, or if you just want a more healthier alternative than regular tea, then uh, I really recommend it. Still get the feeling that something's inside you. Still get 